Hello, welcome to our latest video on how to play Sudoku. This is our set of uh, instructional videos to teach people uh, techniques for how to solve Sudoku puzzles. And in this, uh, in this edition, we're going to be talking about a uh, slightly more advanced technique of uh, looking at three rows at a time. This is what I like to call the, the three rows at a time technique. And basically what this technique does is it kind of gives you a way to focus on just part of the Sudoku grid and have a methodical process to work through all of the numbers one through nine to see if there are opportunities to solve empty spaces. And basically the way this works is here we have a new Sudoku puzzle. Uh, what we need to do is um, find a find a part of the of the grid where we can just focus on three rows at a time. Like for example, uh, this top three, uh, these top three squares, um, or these middle three squares right here. This left center middle square and right center square, or the bottom set of squares, the lower left center. Uh, lower center and lower right square. Why don't we start with the bottom? Uh, because these top squares don't have very, num very many numbers in place yet, so it might not be the best way to illustrate this technique. And the bottom three squares have uh, slightly more numbers, but not you know it's not so packed with numbers as the middle as the middle three squares. So, so let's try this. Uh, basically, what you do uh, once you've settled on your first three rows, your first three horizontal rows that you want to look at, your first set of three squares. Um, just start start at the bottom of the of the list of numbers. You know, start with number one. So, right now uh, we have a number one in the top row, and um, there are no other ones currently in place. Um, so, if we extend this one, you know, this extend the reach, so to speak, of this one all the way across the top row, we know that there cannot be a one in this space or this space. And all of a sudden, we know now that the, the one has to go in this space, the center space of the lower right square. So there's a one. And now, what does that tell us? This one uh, extends its reach over here into the center, uh, the lower center square. So there can't be one here, or here, or here. And we also know that there's a one in this right column, so there can't be a one there. So that means the one has to be there. So all of a sudden, we just very quickly solved the number one for two of the squares, where it you know, previously did not uh, did not exist. Let's try again with number two. If we we're looking in these bottom three squares, these bottom three rows, um, you can see a two here in the middle row and a two in the top row. So that the two cannot be here and it cannot be here. So that means the two must go there. Just for the sake of completing our work, this bottom row contains one, two, three, five, six, seven, eight, and nine. So that means the number four is the only one missing. And now let's see. Let's look at number three. There's a three here, and there's a three here. So the, the so we're still missing a three in this bottom center square. And we know there's a three in the center row, so it can't be there. And we also know there's a three in the center column. So we can see it right here. So it can't be there or there. That means there's a three in the top right square, top right space, sorry, top right space of the bottom center square. So now all of a sudden we're done with one through three. Let's look at number four. Uh, all three of the fours are placed. You can see them right there. So we're done with four. Let's look at number five. I only see one five currently. And we don't really know much else about the fives so we can't really do anything about five at the moment. Let's move on to number six. There's a six here and a six here. What does that tell us? That means there's going to be a six in one of these two top row spaces in the lower right square. But we currently don't know where uh, other sixes might be to the point that we were able to rule rule either of these spaces out. So we have to leave the six alone, skip ahead to the next number. Let's look at number seven. There's a seven in the bottom row, seven in the middle row, and that doesn't really help us because once again we have two spaces that could contain a seven, but based on what we're seeing in these bottom three uh, bottom three rows, we just don't know enough to rule them out. So we're kind of stuck on seven at the moment. 
Let's look at eight. There's an eight in the bottom row. Of course, the bottom row is totally full, so that's kind of irrelevant. There's an eight in the center row, so that means the eight cannot be here. And all of a sudden, we just solved another space. So let's complete our work over here. We know that we have 1, 2, 3, 4, 6, 7, 8, and 9. So that means there must be a 5 right here. That leaves us with another row in the middle that has 8 out of 9 numbers filled in. So that means this space must contain 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. Must go right there. And then having filled in that 9 in the row, we now know enough to complete this square because we already have the numbers 1, 2, 3, 4, 6, 7, 8, and 9. So there must be a 5 right here. Let's take another look at this lower right square. We have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 8, and 9. So the only numbers missing are 6 and 7. But based on what we have so far, we just don't have enough information to fill those out. So we're going to have to, we're going to, have to leave that one alone for right now. Let's take a look at the rightmost three squares and see if we can use this technique uh, by focusing in on this set of squares. And let's start with number one. There's a one in the center column right here. And there's one in the left column right here. So that eliminates one, two, three spaces. And then there's two spaces over here that might contain a one, except we know that there's a one in the bottom row. So the one cannot go there, or there, or there, or there. So the one has to go in this upper right space right here. Moving on to number two. Same process, basically. There's uh, number two right here. Uh, but I'm only seeing only seeing one two so far, so that's not really going to be very helpful. Uh, we don't have enough information yet to focus in on the two, so let's move on to the three. The three's already all uh, in place. There are three threes right here, here, and here. Moving on to number four, there are two fours right here, so that rules out the right column and the center column, which means that there must be a four right here. Let's look at number five. It's a pair of fives. Left column is already full. It's irrelevant for the top right square. There's a five in the middle column, so that rules out that space. And then there's a five in the top row, so that rules out that space. But that means there are two spaces where the five could be, and we don't know for sure which is which. Let's look at number six. I only see, oops, sorry, I only see one six in this set of three squares, and we just don't know enough to. We don't have enough information to go on. There are no sevens in this set of three squares, so we'll ignore that. There are two eights right here and here. So eight cannot be here and it cannot be here. And oh, look, we have an eight in the top row, so the eight cannot be there either. So this space, this space, and this space are all eliminated, and eight must go there. Looking now to number nine, there's a nine in the center column and a nine in the left column. But that means the 9 could be in any of these three spaces. We don't know enough yet, based on this technique, based on what we're looking at currently. We don't have enough information to place the 9. So, um, so that technique's been helpful to solve a few spaces in this right set of squares. Let's see. Let's look at one more part of the board and see what we can figure out. Um, let's look at the center set of squares, this top, middle, and bottom. See if we can solve any spaces because we have quite a few numbers placed, especially in this bottom square. It's totally full. The center uh, square is almost totally full. In fact, we can go ahead and fill that in. Um, this space must contain, let's see, 1, 2, 3, 4, 6, 7, 8, 9, must contain number 5. So we can go ahead and do that. Let's see if we can fill in this top square based on what we know from these bottom two squares. Um, start with number 1. There's a one here and a one here. So those four spaces are eliminated from containing the one, but there's still two spaces where the one might exist. But it, uh, we don't have enough information yet, so we have to ignore one. Uh, two, we already have three twos all in place. One, two, three. The number threes, we have one, two, threes in place. And so the center column cannot contain three, and the right column cannot contain three. So those four spaces are eliminated. And oh, look, we have a three in the bottom row, so that space is eliminated. So that, 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 and that cannot contain the three, so the three must go right here. Um, so that was number three. Let's look at number four. We have all three fours in place. Looking at number five, all three number fives are in place. Number six, we have two sixes in place. 
the center column and the left column. And then, oh look, the top row contains a six. So that means the six cannot be here or here or here or here. So that means the six must go there. Number sevens. There are two sevens in the right column and the left column. But we don't have any other information at the moment. It will tell us which of these two spaces the seven must be in. Number eight. There's an eight in the left column. And there's an eight in the right column. But once again, the eight could be here or here. We don't know for sure. And then the number nine. There's a nine in the left column and a nine in the center column. So that means we can solve another space. The nine cannot be here or here or here, because those nines are already in those columns. So that means the nine has to be in that space. So rather quickly, we figured out how to how to solve most of this top square. And let's just kind of see if we can fill it in. We're still missing number one, number seven, and number eight. Um, we know that the one cannot go here because there's one in the top row. We know that the one cannot go here because there's a one in the center column, so the one has to go there. And now we still need a seven and an eight for this top square. But based on what we're seeing so far from the neighboring squares, we're going to be limited in what we can do. And so we're going to have to just skip that one for now. We've, we've solved as much as we can for this top center square. So at this point, <clears throat> why don't we go down and look at these three center squares again, see if we can fill in anything. Uh, start with number one. All three ones are in place. Uh, let's look at number two. We have a two in the bottom row. We have a two in the middle row. So there must be a two in one of these spots. And we know there's a two in the left column, so that means the two has to go there. Looking at number three. There are two threes in place. So the three cannot be here or here. And there's a three in the left column, so the three cannot be there. So that means the three must go right in that center space. And that helps us just by simple process elimination. We know that we're only missing one number from this center row. One, two, three, four, five, seven, eight, nine. So that's got to be six right there. Let's see. Number four is already all in place. We have three fours. Number five, we have two fives in place. We have a five at the top row and the middle row. So that means that the five and the square cannot be there. The five's got to be there. This gives us another row that has eight numbers in place. One, two, three, four, five, six, eight, nine. So the seven has to be here. And for now for this square, we only have one number left. One, two, three, four, five, seven, eight, nine. So that's got to be a six right there. And that leaves us with this top row, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 8, 9. This has to be a 7 right there. And now we have a few other spots we can fill in. We now know uh, this vertical column that starts with 1, 8, 4, 6 going down. There's only one space left to fill. We know we're missing 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 8, 9. This is going to be number 7. So by simple process of elimination, that leaves us with this lower right square. We can solve 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 7, 8, 9. That must be number 6 right there. So you can see how this technique can really kind of open up the game a little bit just by giving you a, a foothold, so to speak. You know, you can focus in on one part of the grid. You can look really closely at you know, each number in a, in a row, figure out you know, what do I know based on what I'm currently seeing, what can I eliminate, what do I need to you know, skip over for now? Sometimes you have to take a little break and come back to a part of the grid. But once you've solved uh, you know, a different square or a different row or a different column, um, you know, you'll have more information that will give you the, the information that you need to, to do you know, process of elimination and, and keep placing numbers. So hopefully this technique, the, the three rows at a time technique, uh, or three columns at a time technique, if you will, depending on if you're looking vertically or horizontally at the grid, Hopefully this technique is going to be helpful for you to solve Sudoku puzzles. Thank you for listening. Enjoy playing Sudoku.